Just make sure that you do put your fans facing the outside rather than the inside. Oh god, I've made it worse, I've made it worse! Ah! Ah! Stop! 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 Turn off! Ladies and gentlemen, this is actually my gaming PC. It's the one I use more than anything else. I am a complete Formula One and Halo addict. And believe it or not, I play it on this system. And as you can see, it's definitely a little bit on the smaller side. However, I'm here to tell you that this is officially yesterday's fish and chips. It's old news because the Meshlicious, which was previously my favorite ITX PC, has been superseded by this, the Mesh Room, also from SSUPD. Still don't know what the name means, but let's just go with it. This is actually surprisingly quite a lightweight box. We're not gonna drop it. Instead, we're gonna build a whole new computer in it with DDR5, i7, 12700K, an RTX 30, whatever we can fit inside it. Hopefully a 3090 Ti. And then we'll be seeing whether this thing is actually worth buying and whether it's gonna replace this. It's gonna be major excitement. So don't go anywhere, stay tuned for the full build after a short word from this video's sponsor. AlphaSync is the place to get the pre-built system of your dreams. Without any knowledge on how to build a PC, AlphaSync gets you top branded components at all budgets, lovingly put together right here in the UK. Either choose a master crafted AlphaSync specification or design yours from scratch. The choice is entirely up to you. Get your game on today with that link down below. So yes, this is genuinely the gaming PC that I use and I've had countless hours playing Formula One on this and it's been great, but there have been a few issues, mainly because of the size of it. You are, of course, limited in what you can actually fit in there. But the reason that I love this case so much is that it's so well designed that you can actually fit some pretty big and bold stuff in here without really running into too many issues, especially when it comes to cooling. The only thing I will say is that Meshlicious did supply me, along with this review sample, with some extra mesh side panels that are highly recommended if you do want to go down this route, because if you have a glass side panel and you've got a power supply here, the end result was very hot and very loud. And it also came with a PCI Generation 3 riser cable rather than the Gen 4 one that you're now going to get on this newer version, which is definitely going to make a big difference if you're going for a super high-end GPU. So let's put this to one side and crack open our box. And I believe this is kind of a straight replacement, also not. It is pretty much the exact same shape and volume really, but we'll soon find out how different it is. And at first glance, you can see that there have been some improvements, mainly really being that this one comes in a green color. You can get it in gray as well. But as you can see, it is all mesh time this time around. You can probably get a tempered glass window if you want, but for a ITX system, I really wouldn't bother. This is something that is gonna actually cool a lot better. And when you don't have much space, it makes all of the difference. The side panels just pop off really easily. Sorry, could you say that again? I'm having trouble hearing you. I said the side panels come off very easily. And there you have your mesh. I wonder if this will actually fit on the old case. Basically, it looks to me as if it's the same size, but the sort of pop-in bits are in slightly different locations. So yes, it is very similar. And then here we have our lightweight frame on which to build upon. You can, believe it or not, put a full-size ATX motherboard in this now, which I guess is brilliant for compatibility. You're gonna have to sell and swap some components anyway, so why not just go for the right size, in my opinion, which would be the ITX. Save yourself the hassle, not make things more difficult than they need to be, and then you've got yourself a fully fledged gaming PC. But let's get this gaming PC set up, shall we? Inside your accessory box, we've got a few different metal plates that allow you to mount different things. You can get up to a 280 uh, millimeter radiator in this, but it is gonna limit some of the other space. So it's not like you can just have everything you want in here. There are gonna be some limitations to do bear this in mind before buying something like this. And um, there's no manual inside the box. So I guess it's an e-manual that you'll get online, but you've got some cable management stuff, a couple of extra spacing and mounts and things. And then actually inside the box, you do get a right angle HDMI cable, which is pretty cool. I would love this to be ultra speed 2.1. And the reason that's important is because if you do use a very long graphics card like this 3080 Ti from Gigabyte, then what happens when you plug your port in is that it actually sticks out the bottom. So true story, I've been using my PC upside down like this so I can actually um, get it to work. But to actually kick off our gaming PC, we are going to need a motherboard. This is one that's been supplied by ASRock. It's the Z690 Phantom ITX. And I think this is actually the first ITX 1200 build I've done, which is pretty exciting. It does have Wi-Fi as well, so you've got yourself a little Wi-Fi module. And then my personal favorite, e-waste, one screw in a tiny bag, another screw in a tiny bag. It's 2022 ASRock, really? 
But nevertheless, let's place our motherboard on top of the box. And the CPU we're using is of course from Intel. It's the 12700K. This is probably slightly overkill really for a gaming PC. An i5 would be absolutely fine. But if you're going to go for a high-end system, an i7 is probably your best bet. The i9 produces more heat and it doesn't really give you an extra gaming performance really. So the CPU is in. I'll be adding an SSD, and because this is a PC I actually want to use myself, I'm going to use one that I won't really be recommending, which might sound a bit confusing, but it's only because this is actually a special edition, so unless you're that fussed about having a Mandalorian drive, it's probably not worth the extra money. I would just go with a normal Seagate FireQ to 530, which is a very good drive and it does have brilliant endurance. And then you have the drive itself, which frankly does look great. I mean, look at that. But then again, it also has a heatsink on it that you don't really need. And if you were going to put this in something like a PlayStation 5, then you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. So I don't really understand the point. Will this actually fit in here, though, is the big question. Yes, there we go. We won't be able to put the heatsink back on top, of course, but it doesn't matter because it has its own one. Once you've got that screwed in, it'll look something along the lines of this, which, to be fair, it does actually match the aesthetic, but yeah. Then we can move on to our memory, and this is actually a kit I've been sent out by V-Color. This is their Manta DDR5, because this is a DDR5 motherboard, so this will get quite expensive if you're trying to recreate this at home. Personally speaking, for a gaming PC, DDR4 is fine, so I'd look to get a DDR4 ITX motherboard if you could. But if you're wanting to be particularly future-proof, then obviously DDR5 is absolutely fine. Or if you're watching this in the future, when the price has come down quite a lot, then obviously that also makes sense. Oh, we've got a filler kit as well, but joke's on them, we've only got two slots anyway. Hold on a minute, is it really that fast? Hang on a minute. It's 6,000 megahertz. It's 6,000. That is genuinely impressive. I hope it works. And building in this last time wasn't actually particularly difficult. It did get a little bit fiddly in the end, but compared to some ITX chassis, honestly, this was a dream to build in. Another reason why I liked it. And then you just place it down on top of the four holes, the four standoffs to be correct. Find your bag of screws. You know the drill. Suddenly the ITX motherboard doesn't actually look that small. It looks about right. And you do have a few different options here. Traditionally, your graphics card is probably gonna go in this slot here. But if you want to go for something a little bit smaller, then you can actually use these smaller GPU slots up here, have it up there, and then this frees up some additional room down here for fans or radiators or something. But what most people are gonna do, and what we're gonna do here today, is to actually put one here at the front. And this should support a 280. So we're gonna try it, and if it doesn't work, then I'm gonna cry like I did in my last video, which you can find in the top right-hand corner of your screen. So we're gonna go with plan A, which is the new Pure Loop 2 FX. Before everything gets too messy, actually I am gonna plug in this PCIe riser cable. And remember this is Gen 4 now, which is one of the big selling points of this versus the previous gen. But if you do want to use a larger ATX motherboard, then SSUPD have told me you will need to use a bigger cable that can be sold separately because the one that you have here won't reach. Let me know, by the way, if you do want me to do a full ATX build on this and see how it comes out. It would certainly be an interesting video, wouldn't it? So here we are, a little test fit. Obviously, we do have to add the fans, but I just want to see what we're dealing with here, really. The problem with this Be Quiet all-in-one for this particular application is that the pump is located down here at the bottom separately, which actually isn't ideal when you don't have that much space. I think it will still work, but you might run into some problems potentially. In order to fit in a 280, you do have to first remove this 240 adapter bracket. I'm not entirely sure why they don't just have one larger plate. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me, but both of these need to be removed so you can properly access these 280 fan and radiator mounts. It's definitely worth mentioning that if you do want to do a full custom loop in this, then you do get these little rubber mounting brackets down here at the bottom. It's definitely going to get a little bit tight, but it certainly can be done. And if I do like this case as much as the previous one, I honestly think I'm going to give that a go. See if I can get like a Founders Edition card, have that at the top, and then you've got what, a 120 down here at the bottom, and then a 280 at the front, maybe even a 140. So I think that worked quite nicely. Sadly, there is another problem that I've now discovered by using this cooler, and it's not necessarily a big one, but does 
sort of defeat the whole point of the product because the RGB fans are going to have to go in between the radiator and the pump because we're not going to have room to actually fit everything in if we put these fans here because then you won't be able to angle this up enough. And the problem with that is you're not going to be able to have this in any other orientation other than an exhaust and still be able to see those RGB fans. So if you do want to go for Be Quiet, honestly, just go for the non-FX version. But honestly, I would just suggest getting a different cooler that has that Azatec pump right here at the top because this is just bulk you don't need. Not really designed for ITX, is it? So it's in, but there is already probably another problem where this is either gonna hit the power supply or hit the fan. So I'm gonna say it one more time. This is not the right cooler if you're buying this for yourself. Please go with something else. I'm sorry, but I'm stubborn and I'm gonna make it work. And I think the way I'm gonna do this is by test fitting our power supply. This is one from Seasonic, it's their Focus, 750 watts. You get 10 year warranty with it and it's platinum rated. The only thing I will say is that I'm sort of expecting the 3090 Ti not to fit in this, but if it then does actually fit in this, I'll need to swap this out for an 850 watt version. I have to say, I love SFX power supplies because they're just so small. I mean, look at the size of the bag, it's so cute. Tiny little thing. This isn't me eating my words. It's still true that buying a different all-in-one would be easier, but it's not quite as drastically um, inappropriate as I first thought. As long as you're using one of these, you can just use the adapter bracket and then it gives you plenty more room to actually cable manage everything. And if you are doing like a custom loop or something, you're gonna need all of the room that you can get. And I must say this has been very well designed because it actually catches on one of the screws I've put into the back of the PSU. So it lines up without you having to have someone that might hold this for you. Small things like that, definitely appreciated. Now that I know for sure that this cooler is going to work, I will attach the mounting hardware to the motherboard. And I'd usually do this, as I'm sure you've seen me do plenty of times on the motherboard box, but I didn't want to do all of that and then just have to remove it again. Right, there we have our cooler then, which hopefully should tuck out the way enough so we can put the mesh on. Right. Let's plug this bad boy in. The case does come with USB 3, USB C, but not actually a lot else. You're not gonna have a reset switch or front panel audio or something like that, which kind of makes sense because I never use it. I mean, the more that I do this, the more I realize this is actually a pretty baffling way to do it. Having the fans on the inside so you can actually clash with cables and things. I know it will be all right because we're not gonna put loads in here, but seriously, get yourself a cooler and then have the fans on the front because you're not gonna have to worry about this. This could end in disaster. Do what I say, not to do what I do. At least I realized though, not completely stupid. I'm now removing the radiator bars from the side so we can get our graphics card into place. And then here comes the bit that a lot of you have been waiting for. Can we fit a big graphics card, I think one of the biggest I have, inside of this thing? So there's only one real way to find out, and that is to actually give it a go. Oh, here we go, here we go. To me, that looks like it's in, but the clearance is <laughs> Borderline. I wouldn't say this is disappointing because this is massively overkill, but we don't know what the next generation of graphics cards is gonna be like. Okay, that does work. It bulges out a little bit, <laughs> but there you go. 3090 Ti, in. You will need this horrible little alien adapter to get this to work though, which is yet more bulk on the innards of our system. I've just discovered a new problem, and I think the problem is still the same one, which is me, and that is, you should have got the graphics card in before you put the all-in-one in because to actually screw this in can't really be done now because you want to go down through here. So I've sort of messed that up a little bit. But thankfully you've watched this video before buying this and you know to put the graphics card in before you're cooler. <laughs> okay, I was wrong. You can't go from underneath, but you can go in from the side. So it's still okay. They've still thought about it. So we have our graphics card in, our cables sticking out. I think we just need to plug this into our power supply. Surely you agree with me, by the way, when I say, why would you want to try and fit an ATX in this? Like, I get you can do it, but the compromises will be insane. Oh, right. We're getting messy now. We're getting messy. This is the bit with ITX I'm not a huge fan of. Cables everywhere. I think we are just about done. And honestly, for ITX, this has been absolutely fine, but you are always going to have quite a lot of bulk to sort of tidy up. And because I've got the fans, again, on the inside. I can't just chuck this in and really neaten it up. 
And I know it doesn't make that much difference because obviously we're putting a mesh panel on anyway, but I definitely am a bit disappointed. I'm gonna have to tweak this before I use it myself, but I suppose it is at least a good illustration of the things to think about when putting together your own ITX system. Oh, I'm annoyed by that. I'm annoyed by that because the only way to fix it is to take the whole thing out again because I'm not going to start cramming cables in fans. That's obviously not going to work. We might just have to make do for this video. Sorry. Then we can put the front piece back on. And then last but certainly not least, we have our top piece. I like how it's completely tallest. It's very easy to get inside this. And then there you have your mesh room. The build is complete and it suddenly becomes this ominous green box. Should we fire it up? The all important bit is the HDMI that goes underneath. I do wish that they'd give you a right angle display port because I think that would be a lot easier. It does require a little bit of feeding through to actually get this out though. This is the tricky bit. There we go, yes. And then that should sit flat. And then you have your four IO located at the back in the normal place. The only thing is the graphics card underneath. Where's the power button now? Hey, you what? That's new. It's around the back. How odd is this little button here? HDMI 1, come on. That's an ASRock logo. In order to actually get this to work with the 750 watt power supply, by the way, I am gonna have to impose some power limits, I think, on the CPU and maybe the graphics card. This is why I'd recommend getting an 850 watt. So this shouldn't be too difficult if you wanna improve upon this. Those would be the two things that I would swap out. A different power supply if you do wanna go for a 3090 Ti, but do you really want to go for a 3090 Ti? And then of course the all-in-one, so you can actually tidy it up and not have to worry about having cables jamming in fans and things. But alas, here we go, loading into Windows. I've used this before, so it should be okay. Oh my God, I've only just seen the other side. I've only just seen the other side. <laughs> what do you reckon, guys? Do you think there's a pallet um, GPU in here or something? That is literally insane. I mean, part of me actually kind of likes that, I'm not gonna lie. The other side is definitely a bit more subtle, isn't it? That's hilarious. It's pretty impressive though, isn't it? That you can fit an absolutely ridiculous GPU that even a lot of micro ATX and even some ATX cases don't fit in, yet you can put it inside this. That is pretty impressive. What we're gonna do is open up some Cyberpunk and we're gonna test thermals, acoustics, and whether the power supply is gonna have a freak out. I think expect the unexpected in this one. Cause I honestly don't know what way it's gonna go. And here we are then, Ray Tracing Ultra 4K 73 FPS from a PC that is literally the size of what, an Xbox more or less? That is very impressive. I'm surprised it hasn't given up yet. I imagine if you fully maxed out the CPU and the GPU, you'd probably run into some problems. And why would you want to risk that? Just get yourself a better power supply. But this was pretty much just meant to be like a proper stress test of this case. If you think it can handle the most top end components possible, let's not talk about the i9, but it really does show you just how capable this thing is. And yes, at the moment, this is definitely not the quietest PC in the world. It needs a little bit of tuning, but obviously it's going to be drawing a lot of power. So it is going to have to disperse that somehow. But I mean, with temperatures around about 72 degrees on the CPU, 83 on the GPU, there's not a huge amount of tuning you could do anyway, really, to make it that much quieter because I think it's um, pretty much doing the job it needs to do. But I honestly love this case. If you've got the original Meshlicious, then clearly there is absolutely no reason to upgrade for this. There are a few minor tweaks to this, really. It's nothing drastic. I would say it probably is slightly better overall. The main thing really for me would just be that PCIe Gen 4 riser. But then again, if you don't need that and you can get yourself the old Meshlicious and it's a lot cheaper than this, that's still what I would recommend doing. In fact, we can do our final comparison with the two things side by side. There just aren't really that many differences. The most noticeable really on the face of it is that this has two USB ports on the front and a USB Type-C. This just has one Type-C and one USB 3. So that's definitely a uh, What's it called? Quality of life improvement. And that's something that I would definitely prefer to have. But in terms of the case itself, look, here's the ugly bit. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you've got to see this. Ah, there it is. Oh God, I've made it worse, I've made it worse. Ah, ah, stop, 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 turn off. Why did I take the side panel off? I did that for you and look what happened. And don't say it's shoddy workmanship because I know. But anyway, in my opinion, this is the best ITX case I've come across so far. It's not really different to this one, but that does not stop this being the best. Let's just conveniently turn them around this way, shall we? Let me know your thoughts on the Mesh Room S. Is this a case you can see yourself buying? Are you interested in ITX or will we be sticking with something larger? There definitely are pros and cons. It depends what you're gonna use it for, where you're gonna put it. But genuinely, if you're after an ITX case, 
strongly consider this because as long as the price is right, it does come highly recommended. If you've enjoyed this video, then smash the like button and get yourself subscribed. And of course, as always, if you do want to learn a little bit more about anything inside this system, including current pricing, you can find that link down below with my Amazon affiliate links. And while you're down there, be sure to check out AlphaSync. AlphaSync brings you a worry-free PC gaming experience with a huge range of custom-built gaming PCs. With a 4.8 rating on Trustpilot and free next-day delivery available on selected builds, why not let AlphaSync take all of the stress out of PC gaming? Get started today with the link down below. For watching, I'll catch you in the next one.